Hello sewing fans and welcome back. In this video I'll walk you through the process of creating a cropped blazer with two piece sleeves. Be sure to watch until the end for all the details. And if you are new to my channel consider subscribing for more tutorials. Before we dive in let's gather everything we'll need. With me is an interfacing that I'll only use on the collar part to add structure and to help the blazer hold its shape. Also a lightweight lining fabric. Out for something smooth like this soft lining or satin for easier construction. Bear in mind that the fabric choice for your blazer is crucial. Consider something woven for a professional look. And I'm challenging myself to see if I can create both a blazer and a pencil skirt with a 2 meter fabric. Alright here is the fun part. We have our front bodies pattern paper laid with all the key horizontal lines marked. Let's label them one by one starting from the top that is shoulder line all the way to the waist line. I left 2 inches button allowance which I'll trim off later to exact measurement needed for the buttons. And to start off, let's mark neck width of 2.5 inches on the shoulder line. On the same note, mark half shoulder measurement as well. After that I'm going to measure down 1 inch shoulder slope, then align right from the neck width to the shoulder slope mark. On top of that transfer half your shoulder measurement to the drawn chest line. Just so it's easy drawing armhole depth in a straight line that connects to shoulder slope. Now we'll be focusing on taking quarter bust measurement on the chest line. That's basically bust measurement divided by 4. Next is finding armhole depth midpoint and mark. Go half an inch inwards from that exact mark. After which I'll smooth out armhole with the help of a French curve ruler. For a basic dart placement, take off your bust pan on waistline and on bust line as well, strictly from the center front. When done, draw that line as can be seen. Now on the drawn dart line, go 1 inch down from bust line and mark the dart apex. Then 1 inch dart width on the waistline and given these points, draw 2 lines from the dart legs to the apex. With dart drawn, let's measure quarter waist circumference on waistline plus 1 inch dart replacement plus one more inch for seam allowance. Already we have quarter bar circumference marked here, so I'll only add one inch seam allowance. Now that we've incorporated all the body measurements, let's move on to drafting the side edge of the bodies with the help of a ruler. Instead of calculations, we can use this trick in finding shoulder midpoint. Fold your tape measure in half and mark. From there, draw a line connecting this midpoint to the existing dart line. The shoulder edge looks a bit too pointy, Let's fix it by taking half an inch off the shoulder line so we can use a curvular to create a new smooth armhole. Lastly connect the armhole with a continuous line and shoulder line as well. Next up we'll measure 1 inch outwards from the center line for the required button allowance. On the same note measure neck depth that is 2.5 inches from shoulder line then align across the mark in that manner just so we can draft the lapel front from the bust line outwards to the drawn line. Having drawn the lapel front, let's also define the back from bust line to the neck width. On top of that, go 1 inch upwards for the break point or rather the notch point. You'll see what I mean by that. As can be seen, there is a line that separates the lapel from the standing collar. I'm now going to use about 3.5 inches as the width of our standing collar. Let me also blend in the rest of the edges as shown. I'm currently cutting out along the outline now that I'm done drafting. The next step involves drafting the back part on this other piece. So there is half an inch seam allowance left and lines drawn from shoulder line to waist line. It's equally important to note that another slight difference is 1 inch neck depth as opposed to what you saw earlier. I want to start off by taking half an inch off the shoulder. This too is a repetition of what was done earlier before committing to the final armhole with the marker pen. With that completed, take what I always circumference on waistline plus 1 inch that replacement plus 1 more inches stitching allowance. On top of that, add same stitching allowance on chest line just so you can draw back body side edge with the help of a ruler of course. Again, find shoulder midpoint, hence a line connecting this midpoint to the existing dart line. Very fast, I'll show you how to a snatch. Go 0.5 inches inwards from the center line. 
after which draw a new center line that runs from the mark to the neck width. Additionally, reduce the seam allowance with the same measurement because we don't need all that allowance. When done, blend in the lines. Let's now cut out a long outline. Have traced out pieces of fabric from the drafted patterns, leaving enough allowance on each. It's crucial to note that the lining pieces are about 1 inch shorter than the main fabrics. I'll put back pieces aside for now as I show you how to go about the front pieces. In these, I use main fabric as lapel facing, so now I'll remove all the pins first. From here, we'll head over to the sewing mesh in order to attach the side panels to the center pieces with 0.5 inches right sides facing each other. Same considerations to be applied to the linings as well. This is me attaching side panels to the center piece as I explained before. I hope that by now you are all aware that stitching is always being done from waistline upwards. Since this fabric has a very similar look on both sides, marked on the wrong sides to avoid any confusion. I have just applied the interfacing on the lapel facing piece. Now following the same technique used, attach the side lining to them. Alright, back pieces here with new center line made visible. So now let's also stitch along the line top to bottom and same goes for the facing pieces. After stitching and ironing seams flat, here is what we've got. Let's now attach lining and fabric pieces from waistline with 0.5 inches. When done, we'll also attach them from the lapel front with the same measurement top to bottom. Here is a trick for a perfect lapel. Start top stitching on the main fabric heading towards the notch where the lapel falls over. Once you reach the notch, switch sides and top stitch on the lining to keep everything polished. I want to clarify that I left an opening on the lining back piece. I'll reveal its purpose in a moment. For now, let's attach them from waistline as well. After attaching and ironing, here is the back of the blazer. Front part to iron flat. In case you encounter any difficulties, feel free to leave a comment and I'll be happy to help. Let's now focus on attaching side edges, back piece to front that is. Grab the two from the folded crease, right sides facing each other, and stitch with the body measurement from one end to the other. On top of that, You'll also need to join shoulders, linings to linings and same to fabrics with 0.5 inches right sides put together. Look at what we've got. Always keep in mind that ironing at each and every stage makes things flawless. Let's now focus on the standing collar creation. I didn't throw away this piece since it's going to serve as a guide in giving us the exact shape of the collar edge. Grab your tape measure and measure from one break point to the other all round. I believe you've seen that the collar width is left out. The total measurement is 12 inches. So now I'm going to start with some prep work. Here is the fabric gum, which is on fold. I want to create two layers. That's why I'll fold it in that manner. We need double thickness for stiffer and more supportive collar once ironed on fabric. Pins are coming in handy to hold everything in place before we start drafting. From there, I'll draw a curve as shown. And with the curve drawn on it, Measure collar width of 3 inches across it. Once done, join them to form a continuous curve with the help of a curve ruler. Okay, let's measure collar length of 12 inches along the top edge. With the length marked, bring forth the extracted collar piece so as to shape the edge from the mark before cutting out. We needed two layers and here are they. So now I'm going to iron both on fabric. And this is it after ironing. I told you guys the layering makes it stiffer. Moving forward, I'll layer it again on another piece just so I can stitch from this point to the other end. The rest is to be left open. And once done, I'll just trim off excess fabric. I'm done stitching and also trimming off excess fabric. Time to turn fabric right side out. I've also ironed it flat guys. Let me now show you how to attach it to the neckline. First thing first, grab it right sides together, then stitch from junction to the notch. 
After it in such the collar piece between the two pieces from inside and stitch to the pointed edge and the rest should follow all the way. To ensure accurate result, you really have to be patient and take your time fixing these. If you are finding this tutorial helpful, you can support the channel by watching the video ads. Stay tuned because I'm going to also upload a video soon on how I created a two-piece blazer sleeve with lining. Those of you who are curious about the back opening, it's the key for attaching both sleeves. I'm going to stitch sleeves fabric to fabric and same to linings from the opening for a flawless finish both sides. Thank you so much for watching the entire video. Your support is what keeps the channel going. Let me know in the comments if you have any question about the steps we covered today. And for the first time viewers, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future tutorial.